Hello! In today's video, we are going to be talking about how to write an effective scientific argument. In science, your ability to communicate what you know is equally as important as what you know. For that reason, it is so vital that we practice the skill of writing good, convincing scientific argument. First piece of this is answering the question that's being asked. We want to make sure that whatever question is being asked is actually what we're addressing in our argument. Secondly, we want to make sure that we are providing enough evidence and reasoning based on the scientific concepts that we know to support the answer that we've come up with. Today, we're going to look at the CER, or Claim Evidence Reasoning Method, of writing a scientific argument. Before we start to write a scientific argument or answer any question, there are some things that we want to make sure that we are doing. Before we can answer the question, we want to make sure that we are very clear on what we're being asked. In order to truly answer the question, you need to know what the question is. So you need to take the time to stop and say, what am I being asked here? Secondly, you want to think, what information or data do I have that's relevant to the question? If this is a lab, this is probably the observations or data that you collected in the experiment. Finally, we want to think about the scientific concepts, so the things that we've learned in science class, the laws, rules, and overarching concepts in science that are needed in order to show how that evidence actually supports what you're saying in your argument. So today we're going to walk through our CER method. Don't worry, don't panic but we're gonna use an example where we need to be physicists for the day. So don't worry, there won't be a quiz on this, but in order to write our CER, I'm gonna give you a little introduction to a very important concept or scientific rule in physics called Newton's second law. Newton's second law is a scientific law or concept that tells us that the force that I apply to an object is equal to the object's mass times or multiplied by its acceleration. This just means that an object's speed and how that object's speed will change is based on the object's mass and how much force I apply to it. Simply put, this tells me that more mass will produce less acceleration or less change in speed and more force will produce more acceleration or more change in speed. Now we're going to jump right in to an example of how I can write an effective scientific argument to answer a question. So like I said, today we're pretending that we're physicists. So you're gonna pretend that you're in eighth grade science class performing our balloon rocket investigation, where you actually went ahead and built balloon rockets, put different amounts of paper clips on the rocket, and tested how fast your balloon rocket was able to travel. You'll see here that we went ahead and collected some data about all of our different balloon rockets, the number of paper clips we placed on them, and the speed that they were able to reach. So take a moment here to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can draw a conclusion to how the number of paper clips on the balloon affected the rocket speed. Now let's look at the first step to any good scientific argument. The first step in a CER argument is our C. This is our claim. A claim is simply a statement that answers the question that is being asked. Some tips to keep in mind when writing your scientific argument claim. Your claim should only be one sentence in length. It should directly answer the question that's being asked and it should not include the word because. Make sure when you're writing a claim that you make a statement that answers the question and you put a period at the end. Anything that comes after that because doesn't belong in the claim section, but likely in the evidence or the reasoning. Now, let's go ahead and look at what my claim should look like for our balloon rocket example. So remember, our first step is to make sure that we're clear on the question that's being asked. Here our question is, what is the effect of the number of paper clips on the speed of the balloon rocket? In this case, taking a look at my data, I should have been able to conclude that the more paper clips that were placed on the balloon rocket, the lower or slower its speed. So my claim should look something like this. The more paper clips on the balloon rocket, the lower its speed will be. It is a direct one sentence answer to the question that's being asked. Now that we've written our claim, let's take a look at the next step in a scientific argument. 
the E or evidence. Evidence is the data or the observations that support the claim that you've made. Again, if this is a lab or an experiment, these are likely the data and the observations that you collected when doing the lab procedure. Some things to keep in mind. We should only include the evidence that is directly related to our claim. If it is irrelevant or if it doesn't directly help support my claim, then it simply makes your argument more confusing. Now, if we do have multiple pieces of relevant evidence, we want to include as much evidence as possible. The more evidence that we have, the stronger the argument. If you have more evidence or data to support something you're saying, I'm more likely to believe your claim. Let's go ahead and find the appropriate evidence for our argument. Remember that we made the claim that the more paper clips that we put on the balloon rocket, the lower its speed was. Our evidence here was, of course, the number of paper clips on each of my balloon rockets and the speed that it was able to reach. You will notice here that I didn't just include one or two of my pieces of evidence. I included several different examples of the number of paper clips on the rocket and the speed that it was able to reach. Ideally, you would actually include all of them to make for the strongest and most convincing argument. Finally, that leads us to our third and most important step of our argument, which is our reasoning. The reasoning is the explanation of how or why the evidence supports your claim. Without the reasoning section, your evidence is nothing more than data or basic observations. The reasoning is where we pull it all together and explain how or why that actually supports the claim you've made. In your reasoning section, here is where we include the relevant scientific facts and concepts that explain how your evidence supports the claim. What we should not do in our reasoning section is simply repeat or restate the evidence. Again, here we must include those scientific facts, concepts, ideas that we know make our evidence support our claim. In our case, you might think back to that quick physics lesson that we had in the beginning of this video. We talked about how Newton's second law is the scientific concept that describes the connection between force, mass, and acceleration. I know that that, of course, is what dictates the outcome of my experiment and what supports the reason that I've made my claim. So in this case, my reasoning should look something like this. Analysis of our data shows that as more mass, or paper clips, are added, the speed of the balloon rocket decreases. This is supported by Newton's second law, which states that an object's acceleration is based on its mass and the force applied. Newton's second law tells us that if force is constant, as mass increases, acceleration will decrease. The force applied to our balloon rockets was constant, so as we added more mass, again in the form of paper clips, to the rockets, their acceleration decreased, resulting in the lower speeds that we saw. You can see here that in my reasoning section, I've used the relevant concept, which is Newton's second law, to explain why that evidence makes my claim true, or the scientific concepts that support why that was observed.